Welcome to AkronHipHop.com, where we paint positive images of our people every day. My name is Deborah Calhoun. I teach at Kent State University in the Department of Pan-African Studies. Hey, Hiram, how are you today? You know what? I am doing okay. I'm pretty fair for a square. Glad to have you back. Hey, I'm glad y'all let the back door open so I can sneak in. Oh, get out of here. We left the front door open. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, man, first off, man, I'm just so happy that you come down and you take time out your busy schedule to educate the masses of our people here in Black Widow, Ohio. Hey, it is never a bad day to be educated. Every day is a good day. So what are we doing today? What today, we are doing this season. Since spring came early, I figured we could continue the process of education because February is not just for Black History Month, it's 365, 24 seven. So what I want to do with my visit today is to begin talking about how one begins a set of books for your family, for yourself, to begin the study of Black history. And I will say that this is not a comprehensive list. It is just a list. I had first 25 books and Brother Hiram said I had to cut it down. So I cut it down. So what I want to do first is to talk about one of the emerging classics in the discipline. It's by Jabari Osage. It is Seven Little White Lies. And in this book, he takes time to deconstruct lies that we have been told in terms of through uh, the study of history. That is what we've been heard and what we've been told in elementary school, what we've heard in possibly college and high school. And these are thoughts that are ingrained in our people that he thought it was best to explode the myths, as one would call it. So in this book, it is an analysis of the racist propaganda that is part of the education and socialization process in the Western world. And I will say this is not just limited to the United States, rather, wherever you find colonialism, wherever you find oppression, wherever you find domination of the African community in a global sense, you hear of these lies. In fact, I heard of some of these when I visited Africa. Who'd have thought it? So what he does is break down some of these lies. And I'll just go quickly through the first seven of them. There are uh, more, I'm sure, but these are the basis as to why we sometimes think and act the way we do. First, he talks about the fact that Caucasians are the original people. He deconstructs and dis explodes that myth. Why? Because history and archeology span and anthropology has shown us that the birthplace of civilization began not in Europe, not in Asia, but in Africa. Central East Africa, Olduvai Gorge, we know that the more they dig, the older and the further back the archeological clock goes. So we are in fact the original people, whether you look at uh, skeletal remains or whether you look at mitochondrial DNA, we know that African people were the first people in the world and that we migrated out of Africa. Secondly, he talks about the fact that Africa or ancient Africa contributed nothing to civilization. That could be not further from the truth. In fact, when Europeans first touched Africa in the 15th century, they marveled at how organized it was. They marveled at how disciplined it was. They marveled at how structured it was. We know that ancient Africa set the tone for the ancient world. In fact, Egypt was the mother or the birthplace I would think of education and information because we know that Greece and Rome traveled south to Egypt to study. So he talks about that as a myth. He thirdly talks about the fact that exposed the myth that the ancient Egyptians or Comedians were Caucasians. This could be not further from the truth. In fact, uh, in the Homo Nefer Papyrus, I learned when I studied and went to Egypt with Dr. Ben Yakinen, he talks about the fact that we came from the beginning of the Nile where the God Happy dwells at the foothills of the mountains of the moon. And that is in Central East Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is Kenya. And last I checked, those people were about as brown and toasty, if not more so than I am. Fourth, he talks about the fact and explodes the myth that the Hebrews built the pyramids or were part of the building of the pyramid process. Uh, the Egyptians do not reference this in any of their ancient texts. There is not documented information about this. We know that Egyptian labor systems, like in massive empires like the Inca or the Aztec, we know they used a system of um, 
proctored labor or labor that was given to the state in exchange for the luxury of living within a massive state. And people periodically would rotate in and out in building of some of these uh, great um, artifacts that are part of Seven Wonders of the World. But we know that the Hebrews are not part of that story. Fifth, he talks about the fact that Africans were savages when Europeans enslaved them. Africans led civilizations and they were at a city-state level of development, development on the way to becoming nation states. In fact, when Europe and Africa met each other in the 15th century, we know that Africa was moving toward consolidating these city-states into larger and larger assemblages and formulations of people, whereas Europe, when it came to Africa, were already had already been through that nation-state period. So they were pretty much on par with um, what ancient Egypt or ancient Europe was doing. And in fact, when we talk about one of our other texts that are on my list from Walter Rodney, we'll kind of come full circle with that and talk about some of his information as to how Africa was on par with Europe. Six, he talks about the fact and disclosed the myth of Columbus discovering America. Now we know you can't discover something that's already there. You can't discover something when there's people already on that landmass, supposedly so-called. Um, we know that Columbus was lost a little bit. We know that Columbus was in the process of trying to find a quicker route to the spice trade because Europe wanted to avoid dealing with the Islamic part of the world in terms of getting and negotiating prices for those spices. And we know spices are indeed the source of life. Spices is what adds flavor to our food. Spices is what is the reason why our food is so good even to this day. So we know that Columbus was lost. He was trying to find a way, bumped into this thing called North America continent, mis mistakenly called the indigenous people Indians, thinking he was in India, but he was a little bit lost. So we know that's a myth. And lastly, of the last of, of many myths is that Lincoln freed the slaves. We know that Lincoln was a man of his time. We know that Lincoln advocated um, Africans going back to Africa if they didn't like the United States. We know that in the third Lincoln-Douglas debate, he talks about being of the superior race and that Africans and African people are the inferior of the humanity uh, of men. So we know that Lincoln was a man of practicality. He only did this move because we know that the uh, North was losing the Civil War and losing badly. And if not for the introduction of African troops into the Civil War, it is projected that this country would have had slavery well into the 1890s, late 1890s, which is too close to the 20th century for my personal sensibilities. So that is Seven Little White Lies by Jabari Osage. I'm going to work on saying his name because I know I'm butchering it. My brother, Osaze, forgive me. Osaze, Osaze, Osaze. <laughs> Don't see this video and come looking for me. I'm just a student. Hey, hey, yo, still, still <laughs> his name with your teacher as well. I am. I want to thank you, man. I'm so excited. Absolutely. You, man. You know, yes. She's making me happy, man. Take us out of here, Ms. Calhoun. Hey, if you can watch this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe to AkronHipHop.com. If you're seeing this on Facebook, remember to share, share, and share again because each one can truly teach one. If you want to follow me, you can follow me on YouTube by uh, Diamond in the Rough. You can follow me on Twitter by History Sister. And you can also uh, hit me up um, anytime you see me in the street at the grocery store. Say, hey, D, I like that last little bit of video you did for AkronHipHop.com. And of course, click on that subscribe button to AkronHipHop.com. Thank, Thank you. you.